Welcome to the Church of Obelisk and to this game between the Muslim and the Viper. The Muslim here playing as the English and Viper playing as the Rus. Now, the Muslim is a former Warcraft 3 pro player as well as StarCraft 2 pro player and then became a caster in StarCraft 2. And the Viper is generally considered to be the greatest Age of Empires 2 player of all time. Both these players have recently won major Age of Empires 4 tournaments. So it's uh, going to be exciting here to see how they match up in this game. Generally speaking, the Rus are considered to be a stronger Civ than English. But in this matchup in particular, the English actually match up quite well against the Rus. So it should be a close and exciting match. Now, the Viper's build is quite unusual here. Usually, what we see from Rus players, they, put, they make this hunting camp with just one villager, and then that villager makes a house, and then eventually a lumber camp, and just leave this one villager on wood, and don't really care about wood in the early game. But Viper instead has gone here for three villagers on wood, which is very unusual. So we'll have to wait and see what he actually does with that wood. And then he's also just stopped at a, a second scout. He's not made more than two scouts, so far at least. Which is also kind of unusual. Usually you see Roos players making a third or even a fourth scout in the Dark Age. But very smartly here, Viper luring in two wolves into his TC. If you find two wolves near your town center, that's a very efficient thing to do. You can drop up your sheep that you have already collected, as well as efficiently dispose of those wolves. Meanwhile, let's look over at what the Muslim is doing. He's got uh, three on gold, nothing too unusual about that. Sometimes you see only two on gold for um, the English, but instead here the Muslim is going to three. And then once he has two on the gold, he's just going to transfer them right over onto sheep. This is also a bit unusual. Often we see the English already starting a lumber camp earlier because they're going to have, uh, once they're in feudal age, they're going to need lots and lots of lumber for the long woman. So oftentimes you see them already collecting a little bit of lumber in the Dark Age. Although of course that's not really necessary in the Dark Age because the wood you have from the, at the start is just enough to make a house, a mining camp and then a lumber camp once you want to go on, on wood. And it's going to probably rally here onto this wood and get more here onto lumber. Because the thing about Long woman is that they're very expensive to make. They produce in only seven seconds. So you're going to need lots of uh, wood and food for that composition because you want to make uh, villages and uh, long women. So you need roughly equal numbers on both uh, wood and food. Let's look over at uh, well, how the bounty is looking like for the Viper. It's got 215 which is uh, very respectable considering that he's only made two scouts. I don't think he has another one. No, it's only two scouts. And of course, he's going up with the Golden Gate uh, slightly later than his opponent. So we're skipping wood entirely. The Muslim uh, has sort of sped up his uh, build order a little bit and got out that council hall a little bit faster than you would with a normal English build. He's also collected a very respectable number of sheep. He's also only made the one scout. Oftentimes against the uh, Rus players, other saves make a second scout from the town center just so they can better uh, contest those uh, deer. But it's actually done a pretty good job. He's uh, gotten, I think, most of those deer. Um, I've even wiper and then I think he killed those with the villagers. And now he's just, just making a mill here. It's a fairly safe location and that's going to give him some efficient food collection. But it's very important to not uh, start gathering from the deer that's uh, further away. You want to get these deer that are close as possible to the mill so you can get as much food at the start when it's the scarcest. Meanwhile, a Viper is now on wood with a lot of villagers. Ten villagers already on wood. And not actually very many on, on food. Only four. I guess these are going to go back onto wood and food later. Actually, there's also these, these two. And so this is also a fairly efficient hunting cabin. Usually, though, uh, you don't really see this coming out of uh, Roost players. Usually because they're going for professional scouts anyway, they don't bother making a hunting cabin on hunt. Uh, but we see he's actually gone for wheelbarrow here in the Dark Age. So that's probably also why he's up a little bit later than you would usually see. 
And now he's making some archery ranges. I think he started one and I cancelled it again. Um, yeah, there we go. Second archery range here. And the problem with the regular fast castle build against the English is that the English can do a lot of damage with their longbows. Yes. And if you want to know more about this sort of standard roost build, I've got a video on that which is linked in the um, top left. And also down in the description where I explain how that usual build order works for the roost. But uh, here, but for, for that, uh, you would just go into Castle Age without really making any production buildings and just rely on the town center and like a wooden fortress probably to defend yourself. But against English, that's very difficult because their longbows have so much range and that even if you make buildings here under the TC, which uh, Viper's making anyway, they can still come in and you know try to pick off your villagers and it's very annoying. So instead of doing that fast castle build, Viper is just going full into units. And some, I'm not sure exactly how those uh, um, uh, longbowmen can see over the trees. Maybe it's because of elevation, I'm not sure, but usually these trees are not supposed to be see-through. Uh, but he is able to pick off a villager here or there. And he's got one here, losing one uh, longbow there, but that's definitely a worthwhile trade at this stage of the game. And now he's probably going to get another one. He's got six uh, longbows, which is not quite enough to one-shot a worker. You need nine longbows, but there's no upgrades. You need nine longbows to one-shot a villager, or like five to two-shot them. So getting the nine number would be quite nice. And indeed, that's what he's making. And now he has stopped the production of longbows and gone back onto gold. Uh, so with number there's nine um, longbows, that's a very good number to be able to one-shot villagers. And since he's this heavy on gold, uh, this tells us that he is most likely going for a castle age. He's got the blacksmith, but uh, hasn't made any upgrades yet. And, uh, you know, just having the blacksmith is a, is a bit of flexibility and also might confuse your opponent into thinking that you might go for some kind of ram rush. Also see Blacksmith uh, already in for the Viper, he's even gotten the first uh, defense upgrade. So now these nine longbows are no longer going to be quite enough to one-shot a villager. Now there's basically two approaches you can take if you roost against uh, the, the English and you want to counter this early longbow rush. And uh, the first is to what uh, we see here a Viper doing is to get some archery ranges. And then the second approach is to make some stables. And the stables you can then go ahead and make either early knights or some uh, uh, some horsemen, which are quite good against uh, longbowmen. But the problem with that approach is that uh, longbowmen um, are not that bad actually against cavalry. And then also the English player, of course, can add in some uh, spears, and that will be uh, quite problematic if you were just going for a straight cavalry. Um, but here we see this archer brought also works quite well. Longbows in general are stronger than, than archers, but they're also a bit cheaper. Longbows cost uh, 40 and uh, 50, whereas the archers cost uh, 30 and 50, so they cost uh, 10 less food. And But the, the problem is that longbows have more range and the regular archers also do one less damage so we can sort of kite with longbows but the regular archers are also faster so um, this is why viper is just sort of rushing in there and trying to get as much done as possible but once you're inside the english base and they get that network of castle effect here and also can fight with the villagers you have to retreat but this was a very uh, successful attack here for the viper also, what you have to take into account is that in the early game, the Rus economy tends to be a bit stronger than the English economy. You get that uh, bonus from your um, uh, tier system here. You get a plus 10% uh, villager food harvest rate, which is a very nice bonus. And with a wooden, wooden fortress, you also get your lumber income increased by 20%. And on top of that, Viper also has... Uh, actually gone for the hunting upgrade so not the professional scouts but the extra hunting upgrade as well as the wheelbarrow so he's going to have a very very strong economy here and is able to just produce more consistently but now he's actually stopped 
Archer production is adding in horsemen, so this tells us that he wants to sort of pounce on these longbows and just do a lot of damage with a quick feudal attack. But in the meantime, the Muslim is already very close to aging up. He just needs another 100 food, and then he can place down his landmark, getting that uh, second TC most likely. And that means that he's going to have also, of course, up uh, access to upgrades. So you can upgrade his um, archers. And he's also making a rather bold outpost here. A bit farther forward, sort of protecting this relic, which is going to be uh, important once the roos are in the castle age. Or you can even take it yourself if you're in castle age. Um, but these workers are not quite finished here. They're not going to finish in time, unfortunately. So it's going to take a lot of damage there. And, you know, losing two villagers uh, really, really hurts at this stage of the game. And this outpost also not going to finish, which is very annoying. But he's going up here with the King's Palace, which is the extra TC. And he's just placing this in a pretty defensible location. This means that he's going to have the Network of Castle bonus in a very large radius. And um, this also means that his gold spot is going to be very secure as well as those berries. And are gone now, and he's also getting Wilbur now. I'm just using the gold he has. And these villages are not working quite efficiently. You see that woman was being a bit lazy there. But, uh, and there's also the problem if, if you have too many villagers there, and they don't often show up as idle because they're still sort of trying to gather from the, the jeep. That's probably why he wasn't noticing that for a while. But now, big attack is coming in here, and the Viper just coming in with all these horsemen, killing a whole bunch of these uh, longwomen. Horsemen, of course, good against archers, they have a lot of bonus damage against them. So even though their base attack is not that high, they do actually 18 damage against Longbowmen, which is almost as much as Knights do, which are twice as expensive. He's picking off a lot of uh, these archers, and um, Longbowmen are not quite upgraded yet, so... This has been a, been a quite successful attack. He's lost a few Horsemen, but not too many. And now behind this, he's going to go ahead and do a bit of a ramp push. It's a bit inefficient how he's doing that. It's better to spread out your archers between those three ramps. Um, but uh, this is uh, the less APM way of doing it. Not that Viper needs that because he's a very fast player. But um, behind this push, the Viper is going to have to go up to H3 as well because you can't just keep uh, being in H2. Because uh, once like, the English player, for example, gets out a Mangle or two, it's very hard to do anything with archers. And, you know, the English might also just go for like a stable, make some knights of their own, and then your archers just get completely destroyed. So, uh, actually, so many idols. Oh my god. I was not paying attention there. 13 idols. Um, but I guess he's busy with something else. I'm not sure what. Okay, there's like a few horsemen here coming in. Trying to pick up some villagers. Not getting that much done. And he's walling up here on the sides. Very smart. But he does not know that this push is coming in. And it's actually not that many units, right? This is uh, like 16 archers. And they are just some of the basic archers. Oh, but this horsemen coming in again. Picking off so many veteran longwomen here. Almost were a bit too far forward there, I guess. And that's a big win here for the Viper. But the thing is, English are really good at defending. So even though he might lose a few villages here, this push it doesn't really have much potential of killing him. But sort of it forces the villagers to be brought out into fight. And even though the Muslim has two Tantanas, he actually has no resources right now. He's zero food income. He doesn't even have enough uh, to keep an, a single extra villager here. So, even though in terms of military numbers, he's trading very efficiently, he is losing villagers and he's not attacking right now. And behind this, Viper is going up with the Abbey of the Trinity. Uh, only five villagers in that, that's going to take a while. But if you look at the villager numbers, it's 41 economy for the Muslim and 47 here for Viper. So even though he's second TC here for the Muslim, and even though the Muslim earlier picked off a few villagers with his longbows, He's now actually behind in the economy, despite having a second TC, and he can't really afford right now to queue up any villagers because 
His mill also got destroyed. He has to rebuild that. And that's just the only full income he has right now. And he also has no wood, so he can't make farms either. So he's in a bit of a pickle right now. And he's trying to use this timing when he is in age 3 and his opponent is Nas to make something happen with these 17 veteran longwomen. But by the time they arrive, this abbey is going to be complete. And what is Viper doing behind this? He's got some horsemen that he's sending a long way around. And what is he doing here? He's still hunting here. He didn't actually go for professional scout, which is kind of unusual, but it actually sort of makes sense in this uh, on this map, in this matchup, because it's a matchup where the English usually has a fairly immobile army, so you can actually go out and do things like this, like this hunt. And also it's a map that... Uh, is fairly closed off, so we can maybe do some walling and so on. It's also like a chance that the opponent might wall in uh, his deer, and then you can't take them with your scouts. So it actually kind of makes sense to skip professional scouts here. So with this wooden fortress here, he's defending himself, but of course, it's a bit annoying to have to send these villagers away from wood, and there's no really good other wood line. Like you have to go all the way over here, which is also like very way in the front. Or for this like stealth forest, which is not very efficient. So um, it's a bit of a, of a problem here. But actually, the viper is not really using these uh, golden gate supply tickets here. But twelve here, you can just buy all the um, wood he requires. But now we are in the castle age, and these villagers again have to retreat. Now he's just gonna go ahead and make some knights. He's got the upgrade here for, for to make them regular knights. He's also got a mangonel. Which is, of course, great at defending this push. Oh, also some villagers here that were trying to take the hunt. Get picked up by the horsemen. Very nice raid here for the Viper. And so if you look at the villager count now, it's 48 for the Muslim and 51 for the Viper. So despite this two, these two diseases being operational all this time, Viper still has the better economy. And that's uh, even just in terms of uh, raw numbers of villagers. This villager is also going to be more efficient because uh, he's got... The uh, tier 2 here, that's uh, extra 10% uh, food harvest rate. And also got the wooden fortress to make his uh, wood income faster. As well as also having two upgrades here. Actually three upgrades here for food. Those villagers are going to be much more efficient. And not to speak of the uh, relics that are going to be coming in. Because he has every Trinity. He's going to make some warrior monks. And collect some of these relics. And... You can see that these long women with the upgrades are actually sort of okay fighting against the knights as long as they're not in range of mangonels. So uh, the usual composition for the rules of course is to go for a lot of host archers with uh, some scouts. But against the English it's not actually that great because uh, the long women really really uh, do quite well against the uh, the horse archers is not like a hard counter, but they do definitely, they're more cost effective. And also the spearmen actually also kind of okay against uh, uh, the horse archers because uh, uh, unlike uh, other like regular archer units or like the mango die and uh, the camel archers, the horse archers don't actually have bonus damage against uh, spearmen. So they actually kill them rather slowly. And of course they do take bonus damage from spearmen if they get in range. So we have to constantly kite there. Which is difficult if you're being shelled by the long woman. That makes a lot of sense here for Viper to go for this more knight heavy composition. But maybe later on it's going to add in some horse archers. But for now it's just uh, knights and mangonels, which is very very strong against what uh, the Muslim is making here. And this mangonel here trying to kill some of these wood villagers. And this shot is not doing that much damage. And we're just actually rushing in there. Can you get off a shot off here? Nah, not quite. Almost got a second shot off there, which would kill a lot of villagers, but doesn't quite get it. And this is actually a nice cleanup here for the Muslim. He lost, I think, like two or three villagers, but uh, killing like two knights and a mangonel for that is very much worth it. But at the same time, though, he's being harassed here. Actually, at the same time, also two villagers died back there from the knights. So. Viper doing a really, really good job splitting off his forces and finding pickoffs here and there. And you can see the Muslim is still uh, busily making villages, but it's kind of really hard for him because his food income is not that great. And he's got some, some farms now. That also means that he's completely out of wood now. 
and it's really hard for them to actually produce units and villagers at the same time. And if you look at uh, the equal count here, 45 for the Muslim and 60 for the Viper. So even the Viper has on the one to see this entire time. Uh, oh, actually, was seen now so the entire time. Uh, so even though uh, the Viper is in one to see the entire time, he actually has a strong economy. So he's bringing his relics. He's got three relics now, and. It's like a Mor Orion Monk here coming in for the fourth relic here. And the fifth relic is sort of uh, another point of contention here. Oh, the mangonels, the mangonels. Don't lose your mangonels like that. That was kind of silly for the Viper. Uh, definitely would have missed Marco there. But it gets away here with a bunch of uh, injured mice that can hopefully be healed up by Warrior Monks. And while this is happening, um, probably that's why he missed Marco's mangonels because he was paying attention to the knights. He's getting uh, another couple of villager kills here. That's, I think, three villager kills. As well as some more idle time. So the Viper just playing a, an excellent game here and showing us that you don't need uh, more TCs to have a decent economy. Because if you just keep your opponent's economy down, you're going to be ahead economically, even though you're only in one TC. And uh, these knights are a little bit trapped in here. They could uh, be caught here. Uh, definitely not a fight you want to take here. But at the same time, the Viper has got the Sacred Side secured. and get um, at least this one. And this one is going to be more like a point of contention there with the Sacred Side and this last relic here. But you have an extra, yeah, he does have an extra monastery. So uh, great job there. And he's going to have 400 gold income from these relics. Plus like 100 here from the Sacred Side. So there's another 500 gold per minute that he's just getting um, basically for free. And he's also got just like a pretty efficient army here. Um, you can't really run in, in, in against this English army with the spears and the longbowmen, but you can engage here with mangonels, pick them up from a distance, and do a uh, reasonable job there. What are the upgrades looking like? He's, he's got uh, two pierce armor here on the knights, for a total of six, uh, but. We also have a lot of upgrades here for the Longwomen. They also have double attack upgrades, so it sort of cancels out the Pierce Armor upgrade there. And this is a very interesting fight here. The Mangler not firing at the most important targets, and he's actually unpacked it shortly before it's firing. So a great micro for the, for the Muslim, uh, pulling away at right exactly the same time. Also like a little bit of miscontrol here from the, from the Mangonels. Second Mangler not even firing here, stuck behind the first one. Um, but despite all of this, it's actually a decent fight for uh, the Viper. His, his army, even though it's like small numerically, is just uh, so much stronger. He just has the much more expensive and also stronger units. These Mangonels trying to get something, but uh, Muslim retreating here. He's uh, adding in more barracks to deal with uh, all those knights. And in the meantime, the Viper has second sacred site and dispatching a royal monk here for the third sacred site, which is what you want to see. It's also starting to farm here around hunting camp because there's not enough space here around the PC. There's also two archers here for some reason. I guess I forgot about those. The archers from earlier, I guess. So at this stage of the game, it's quite hard to play playing the English in this uh, situation. Because you really have nothing going for your economy, it's going to be much worse. He's got a few villages, 59 against 71, as well as not having any sacred sites or relics. And this is actually a pretty good attack here. So the Muslim controlling his units quite well here. And you're going to get uh, both his mangonels with minimal losses, so that's a great fight here. But at the same time, but hosts are just not being added in with this very spearman heavy army that's uh, quite efficient. And also, I just also don't lose that badly against the uh, long woman, so that's okay. And this castle, or this keep, is probably going up. It's just like more units here for the Viper and just more, more, just like stronger units. And if this uh, ticking timer of the castle were not here, maybe the Muslim could win this fight, but he's sort of forced to just take the fight straight up. And is losing here. And now he's in a very, very rough spot. And the Viper just doing a great job here of uh, controlling the map. And he's got all the sacred sites now in his control. Uh, he's got four relics. Now five relics, actually. He got that relic that was there. 
And yeah, no, it's also making wooden fortress here to extra for extra protection here as well as making that lumber mining operation more efficient. He's got a bunch of hunting cabins here. Uh, that's actually such a good hunting cabin. 47 gold per minute. And he's even still at tier 2, so um, he's actually gotten on the second and on the boar here with a couple of villagers, killed that. Uh, but if he kills this boar as well, he's actually going to be uh, all the way at uh, 500 um, bounty. So um, that's going to mean another 5% food gather rate as well as increasing the gold generation from all these hunting cabins by 33%. Which would be quite significant considering how many hunting cabins he has. Um, how many does he have? Uh, that's. Uh, do, uh, what is it? F2? He's got 14 hunting cabins. That's so many. And let's, look at, let's take a look at income here. He's got 1200 income. Um, he's even got a few on gold. I don't think he even needs to mine gold here. I think he should be fine. Just uh, um, relying on the gold trickle from the relics and the sacred sites. As well as the hunting cabins. But uh, he's even going up to age 4 now. And uh, I mean at this point there's not much that uh, that the Muslims can do here. He's uh, trying to hold on here. And his uh, economy is still worse than the Vipers. And now he sees the age up here for the Viper. And just going to tap out here. And Viper is going to be victorious. Very nice match here. And thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you want to see more content for HTML Plus 4 and for Dota 2. And click on the videos here on the screen, and always filling. I'll see you there.